Man, this is uh, the truth between the beef between Ice Cube and Tupac. Um, where can I begin with this? When Tupac did, uh, not even Tupac, uh, Ice Cube, when he did America's Most, and he came to the East Coast and started doing his rhymes and had his movement, America's Most Wanted, one of his biggest fans was Tupac. And Digital Underground was on tour with the Lynch Mob. You know, they was doing their little tours and going through their thing. And Q was right there with Tupac. You know, Pac and Q hit it off immediately. They was tight. And, you know, he used to be in that freestyling and doing his thing, dancing. And, you know, he he liked them as a person. You know, when they did the, um, they had the song out, <gasps> You Can't Play With My Yo-Yo, when that dropped, Ice Cube and them, they had a release party for it, like a like celebration, and, like if the song went gold, and Tupac right there, you know, with Yo-Yo and all of them. So him and Q was like really, really tight. Ice Cube is the one that introduced him to John Singleton. A lot of people didn't know that. Ice Cube couldn't do poetic justice. He wasn't going to, you know, they was, he was busy at the time. And he was just doing Doughboy and it was more of a demanding role. And John Singleton was looking for a new face anyway because they was going to get Janet Jackson. And they didn't want to have somebody there that they were going to say, oh, that's Ice Cube. So they wanted uh, somebody who can handle and hit the depths that they thought they can get. And they tried out Tupac for the part. You know, some people knew him from Juice, but they didn't really know him too much as a... They knew he rapped, but he wasn't that big. So when Tupac got the role, it was like, oh man, Tupac in this role with Janet Jackson? And, you know, the whole thing was about Janet Jackson. Wasn't really about Tupac. But he could hit the emotional depths that Q could never hit for that movie. But they were cool. there was no problems or no nothing. Everybody was boys. Everybody was cool. It was all a hundred. So... The thing came around when he told Q back in 92 because the Rodney King riots and everything caused a big, big, just, it affected the world. And it was bringing people together. So, all over the world, people was feeling it. If you was on the East Coast, you talked about the stuff that was going on on the West Coast with the Rodney King. Incident. But on the West Coast, it was bringing the brothers together. And Tupac is like, man, you know, we got to get up with the Mexicans. We need to put everybody together. So, what Pac did was uh, he talked to Q, he talked to Ice-T, and he said, man, we're going to put this joint together on my album, because they was filming in L.A., right, like, right down the street from where the riots was taking place. So they went in the studio, and they hit it. I mean, <sighs> knocked one out the park. And they just kick it and start just dropping their last words. And anybody remember that song? Last words by Tupac and Ice Cube and Ice T. That was a banger. And this is like right after the riots was over. They they filmed. I mean, filmed, they recorded the song. And it was through the roof. Cause it had an East Coast flavor, it had the drum. It was man, that song was worldwide banger. And who best than to have somebody who know how to rap to the drum like that than Ice Cube and and Ice T? Cause they basically both of those guys were bridges to the East Coast and West. Cause they both can go on both sides. Cube with the Bomb Squad working with them for his first album, and a lot of people didn't know. The bomb squad with Chuck D. Them, he Q was coming there to get up with third base, 
But the dude who did the beats for third base, because he liked they sound, but they didn't show up. So he had flew all the way out there for nothing. So he was getting ready to go back home when he ran into Chuck D, and that's how he ended up getting up with the bomb squad to make the records. But anyway, after Ice Cube does his, uh, at the Lethal Injection came out in 93, he did Really Though and all that and all them songs and and most of it was sounding like like people was like, man, this kind of sound like the chronic almost. These beats don't sound like how Ice Cube beats was and they was thinking like Bomb Squad and all that stuff. He's, his beats are more like rider music, like what they playing on the West Coast. Really Though and all those songs. Uh, oh, sorry, somewhere in my eye. And then uh, after all this, uh, Ice Cube started working with uh, Mac Ten on Mac Ten's album because even though he had clicked up with Dub and all those guys. He was working with Mac Ten, so Mac Ten had this. Uh, they were gonna do the West Side Connection with Dub and all them. And before that, you know, he may never been on Western. <laughs> with Monster Logue and all them dudes, there, them serious crips like that. He ain't from like over there. But with Dub C, you can go there <laughs> if you with him. So he's more affiliated with those dudes. And he's spending more time over there with Doug, so his he's seeing a movement with these guys. Like, man, I can make this into like a mini NWA and go in this direction, because Cube is all about change. Ice Cube is all about where the 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 flow is going. If I see the flow is going in this direction, I need to go in this direction. So no more, you know, the Black Power movement that was going on in the early 90's with Public Enemy and all that stuff was dying down with all those you know red, black and green and all that was dying down so he's like okay now it's time to get back to the to the gangster raps you know this is where it's coming from the hard streets and all that you know west coasting you know, and getting high. That, that was the new thing, and it was cool to smoke and ride and cruise. And that's what we need to get into. So they come out with the West Coast Slaughterhouse. And then they got like their little mini NWA thing going. And that's what the West Side Connection was supposed to be like. And Dub C and all them, they get ready to put out their thing. and. So they see uh, when Pac got out in 94, I mean 95, you know, this is when things start to change a little bit. Because when he met Cube in 94, everything was love. And he heard the uh, album that they was doing and all this stuff. And he was like, man, like, this is dope. You know, because he was still cool with Pac and Easy. I will talk about that later. But yeah, Pac and Easy was, they was tight, you know, <laughs> like they had no problems. So I'm gonna t I'll tell you about Pac and Easy later. But let's let's get uh let's get this one done. So when he get out, when they get uh Pac out of jail, you know, and they saw uh they had Dre over there, and they had uh, Cube came by and they was doing uh. What was they doing? This is before they went to jail. I think it was before they went to jail. They uh, they did the Natural Born Killers. The Murder Was the Case movie in 94 before you went to jail. That was the last time he seen Q before he left. And that's when they had a nice talk. And that's when he heard the record. Okay, there it was. I knew it was something I was leaving out. So after they did that, he got out of jail. He met Q. Again, you know, Q, oh man, what's up? And this and that. And then he's hearing the West Coast ride, 
that Tupac is doing, talking about these East Coast rappers and blah, 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 this and that, that other West Coast rappers weren't really taking that approach to bring it to the East Coast. Like, Quick was the only one. And Quick was like, yeah, man, I had my beef with dude with it over there. And they basically telling me to kill it because nobody really backed him up on it. So he just let it die because dude's like, man, dude's career was done anyway after that one album. He was nothing. But nobody on the West Coast was really backing me, you know, to drop them like that. To drop the record, they telling me to chill, you know, get your money, chill, though. You know, chill out. <laughs> So Pac was riding, and we all know how that went, but when Hit Em Up came out, how it changed the West Coast, it changed radio, it changed everything as far as disc records, and as far as what was below the belt, and what could be tolerated, and what could be allowed, and I don't even care no more. So when he dropped Hit Him Up, it was like, oh my God, the whole West Coast was like feeling the record so much. It was like, yeah, that's it, get him. You know, like, yeah, that's right, right on, forget these East Coast. They immediately hated the East Coast. Right off one strength of a record, a whole West Coast was mad at the East Coast. All because of what Tupac was going off on on the record, and the impactful parts of "Hit 'Em Up" is at the end when he's really going off. Because honestly, the the this record Tupac really wasn't you know he wasn't like bringing it on the record. The people that really brought it on the record was the Outlaws. They brought it. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, all right, yeah, they rhyming. You know, they was the rappers, really. Pac was just talking. And I guess that's all they really needed for him to do, because they was rapping. They was bringing it. So I said, oh, yeah, whoever these young dudes is, they bringing it. So, Pac do all that. It makes a storm of what's going on. So, Q didn't really come around too much after that. He was working on the album with West Side Connection. And the Source magazine come out. And Ice Cube is throwing up the W. And he released a video in the summer called Bow Down and it's like what? Pac looked at the, the, the video and he's like we got a new banger from Ice Cube in the West Coast Connection called Bow Down Bow Down when you come to my town Bow Down when I'm West from Bow and then they got in the video, they got some East Coast rapper like kissing the ring to the West Coast. It was crazy. But Pac heard the song and was lost it. Just completely lost his you know what. And he kept trying to reach out to Q. He was like, I'm gonna talk to him first because this is wrong. You know, this 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 what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Now, if I let him go ahead and do this, everybody gonna start coming out with hit him out, hit him up songs. This is exactly what I was talking about. And he was like, "Oh yeah, that's the way to go." And he was like, "He finna just try to come in on what we doing, on our movement, and just you know come in and try to take the whole thing for himself." I I can't let him do it. I can't let him do it. And Ice Cube never got back in contact with uh, Pac. Never got back in contact with him. He knew Pac was trying to reach out to him and talk to him, but he never ever reached back to talk to Pac. Because he knew. He knew what it was about. 
He knew the whole thing. Because people was telling him, like, man, yeah, Pac, man, he hot about that song, man. Bow down, man. He ain't liking that. Man, it's like you trying to bite his thing. You know, the streets going to talk. He was like, what? No, man. <laughs> like, we doing our own thing over here. But Pac didn't like it at all. And he was going to hit the studio and just damage, just completely damage anything Q was going to do. But he was waiting. He was like, all right, I'm ready. You know, I'm, I'm going to see what the album do and see how people respond to it and all that stuff. But then I'm going to have to put him down. So he was waiting on the album to drop. Before he was going to go ahead and do something. He wasn't just going to react off the song. See, Pac was smart. He knew not to just run out and drop a track. Because if he do that, man, they would have put a diss track against Pac or something on their album. They had enough time to hold the album off and put another track on there. So you don't want to jump out right away. So he was going to wait to see what happened. But he wanted to put it out in the public that he was displeased with what Cube did. So they had no pile pocket with this. But his untimely death ended everything. And then Cube could act like, oh man, you know, I really didn't know. And then him doing business with Suge. After Pac died, you know, and the way Pac felt, some of the people, like the outlaws, were kind of happy with how that happened. You know, song Greedy, you know, and they bought a lot of Ice Cube records over. Like, they bought, uh, for the soundtracks they were doing, like, gang-related, they had, uh, No Vaseline from Ice Cube on there, and they got, uh, the song greedy they bought that from Q you know it, it's like why is they doing all this stuff with Q in the West Side Connection and the West Side Connection album blows up you know Pox gone they got Machiavelli they got the West Side Connection everybody West Coasting in and then they touring going doing their shows cities to city and Biggie dies like six months later and they canceled the whole tour and came home because it was the right thing to do because you don't know what the reaction of the public is going to be you talking this West Coast, West Coast, Biggie just died and y'all kind of like yeah, everything yeah, that had to stop immediately so that's what kind of derailed uh, West Side Connection and Momentum and that's the truth between those two. And I'm out.